we're on our way to the annual Hackers' Congress at the Parallel Polis Center in Prague. It draws crypto anarchists from across Europe, people who employ encryption technology to keep their internet activity private. The Bitcoin is their currency of choice. At the center's Bitcoin coffee bar, you can't buy a drink with regular cash or cards, only Bitcoins. So I might as well put my bills away again. But right across the way is an ATM which dispenses bitcoins. First, I have to download an app to my cell phone, a digital wallet to store my bitcoins. Martin Wismayer explains how easy it is to use the app. Just set it to receive, then hold your mobile in front of the ATM. Within seconds, my Czech crowns become 6.51 milli bitcoins. Yes, I use I use a chip implant. I created in 2000. 2014, see, you can see the tiny little chip. Wow. Half of it is antenna and the other half is the chip. So if, for example, I want these uh, bitcoins are on here, and if I want to buy a uh, Red Bull, for example, there, I can show you. Yeah, that's how Martin just holds his hand in front of the machine and out comes his drink. He says this is the future. I don't believe that. Oh, you want it again? Anyone who wants a Red Bull? <laughs> Martin says bitcoins are more than digital play money. Hundreds of thousands of people use them for everyday transactions, eliminating the need for a regular bank account. I think the banks will always be there. It is just but that people have an option now. For the first time in history, this is the first money which is issued by the people and it is owned by the people. There is no banker required. Yeah. It's like where we are going, there is no banks. The Bitcoin is a currency that's generated on the internet, but how? As I learn here, it's quite simple. To produce a Bitcoin, a computer must process certain transactions. In return for these services, it's rewarded in Bitcoins. This activity is known as mining. But only a maximum of 1,800 Bitcoins can be generated per day. That's the predefined limit. So the more people are involved in mining for the currency and the more computers are processing the transactions, the less likely it is that a single computer will be rewarded with bitcoins. So today, anyone wanting to earn large amounts of bitcoins needs to have huge pools of computers or mines. Competition is becoming fiercer as there's only a finite and predefined number of bitcoins which can be mined. So the bitcoin works like a precious resource, such as gold. The more people seek to acquire it, the more valuable it becomes. Around the world, people are feverishly mining for bitcoins. One of the biggest mines is located in Iceland. We're coming in for a landing with Bitcoin pioneer Marco Streng. He was attracted to Iceland mainly because of its geothermal power plants, which produce green electricity from the water of hot springs. He agreed to show us around his mine, provided we don't disclose its exact location. On the drive there, he explains why. There's a lot of money involved and many different parties would have an interest in breaking into the mining farm or hacking into it. You can't be careful enough. From the outside, the hangars look grey and inconspicuous, on purpose. Few Icelanders are aware that huge amounts of virtual money are produced here every day. Inside, it's incredibly loud. My God, how many machines are there? There are over 10,000 graphic cards on this side alone. More than the world's biggest supercomputer. What do you earn here per day? If I told you that, straight away all our competitors could draw a conclusion as to how large we are. In theory, that would give them a competitive advantage. Roughly. I really can't tell you. What he will tell me is that the electricity bill for his mine is 1 million euros a month. Most of that spent cooling the computer processors. 
Another advantage of being in Iceland is that the outside air is reliably chilly, so the climate also helps to keep the hangars cool. In future, Marco Streng plans to set up new steam-powered mining farms. He believes that in an increasingly uncertain world, the value of the Bitcoin can only go one way, up. What makes the Bitcoin special is this independence from the financial world. And that's almost always the banks. And of course, we've seen in the past that this system is, in many places, doomed to failure. Marco Streng is even considering building his own geothermal power plant. After all, he's got to invest the money he's earned somewhere. Money earned by producing a lot of hot air.